In recent years, significant advances have been made in treatment of both earlier stage and metastatic colorectal cancer. Combinations of cytotoxic chemotherapy with new targeted biologic agents have improved results, and advances in the classification of colorectal cancer based on genetic mutations have led to tailored treatments. Despite these improvements, however, challenges remain, including improving treatment in the adjuvant setting and increasing survival in metastatic disease. Today, we are going to talk about advances in the management of colorectal cancer and challenges that remain. Hello and welcome to our discussion regarding clinical advances in the management of colorectal cancer. My name is John Marshall, and I'm a professor and chief of the Division of Hematology Oncology at Georgetown University Hospital, the Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center. Today, I am joined by panelist Dr. Axel Grothy, who is a professor of oncology and consultant in the Division of Medical Oncology in the Department of Oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Heinz Joseph Lenz, a co-director with the Colorectal Center and GI Oncology Program at USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center in Los Angeles, California. Dr. Johanna Bendel, who is the Director and GI Oncology Research Associate Director at the Drug Development Unit, Sarah Cannon Research Institute. And lastly, Dr. Klaus henning Kuhne, who is the Director of the Department of Oncology and Hematology in Oldenburg, Germany. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us this morning as we talk about the, really, the new approaches that are out there in colorectal cancer. And we're going to really divide our discussion up into two main categories. We're going to talk first about those patients that we can get to what I'll call no evidence of disease status. So that's going to be the early stage patients, so stage two and stage three, and talk a little bit about adjuvant therapy. What are we doing there? How are we profiling patients? How are we making decisions? But then we've got this new category of patients that are no evidence of disease, metastatic disease, um, where we can get to surgical resection. How are we managing those patients? What's the role of chemotherapy, adjuvant therapy in that setting? So we're going to talk a bit about that. And then in the second group, we're going to really focus on the management of metastatic disease that we can't resect, the incurable, unresectable metastatic patient. We have new medicines, new therapies, new <clears throat> treatment paradigms, new molecular targets that we're going after, and we're going to drill down on all of that plus the new drugs. So a lot of work ahead. I hope the gang uh, who's watching this will find uh, this useful way to spend an hour or so uh, with us to hopefully give you a better sense of how to manage your patients with colorectal cancer. So Dr. Conan, let's start with you. Let's really look at the world of adjuvant therapy and let's look at stage two and stage three disease. Give us a little sense of how you make an assessment of risk in stage two and stage three disease. Uh, lead us off. Well, the, one of the major advances in the treatment of our patients with colon cancer is the use of, a, of the adjuvant treatment um, in this setting here. Stage three is a clear indication for the adjuvant uh, treatment. Stage three, me three meaning uh, lymph nodes are positive. Well, we know that if a patient has more than four or more than 10 lymph nodes involved, this is the, the risk is even increasing. However, this does not lead us to a different treatment approach. So most of our patients would receive full FOX in the adjuvant setting if they are stage three. However, we have also learned that we have to take into consideration our patients a bit more. So elderly patients above 70 years of age, there should be a bit more caution using uh, Folfox, uh, or using oxaliplatin in, this, in these patients. So uh, we may uh, use capecitabine, the oral fluoropidine in this setting here, uh, or uh, five of you alone as an intravenous infusion. Yeah? Well, there's a bit more more of a debate in stage two patients. Yeah? We know that uh, patients do benefit if they receive a fluoropyrimidine, but the benefit is very small, probably about 3%. So here there's a big debate how best to tailor these patients. And there have been attempts to uh, identify high-risk patients uh, who may benefit most in this setting here. I may just stop here and give others a yeah, chance. Yeah, let, so let me kind of drill down on some of this. Back to the stage threes first. Let's say, Johanna, let's say you got a patient with a, maybe a T2 uh, moderately differentiated tumor, um, good prognosis, but maybe one of 
Hmm. I'll be provocative. 70 lymph nodes. <laughs> <laughs> one of 70 lymph nodes that's positive. Does that patient get full fox in your clinic? Absolutely, positively. I mean, I think that we've seen it's very clear for the stage three patients that if you're lymph node positive, you should receive some sort of adjuvant therapy. And Folfox being the, the prime one or Cape Cytobine and Oxaliplatin. I think where the question really starts to come in is these patients, when you look at the new staging for patients in terms of risk of recurrence and risk of uh, five-year overall survival, for the patients who are stage two, but they have a very large T stage, so a big T tumor, so a T3, T4 tumor, an N0 disease, where their risk of recurrence may be even higher than somebody who has a stage 3 T2 N1 tumor. And so that's where I think a lot of the debate comes in about how aggressive should we be with adjuvant therapy for those patients.